What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Truth Serum. Joey the Truth Wagner with you, everybody. It is time for another brand new episode of the Truth Serum podcast. And as always, I have Victor Valdez with me, the amazing Victor. Once again, how are you doing on this lovely weekend now, Victor? We made it. <laughs> I'm great. Push through the week. Wish I had something to look forward on Sunday, but I know I don't. What about you? Well, uh... There is something to look forward to. It's just not in the win-loss column. We get to see the first career home start for Kenny Pickett as he takes on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from Acroshore Stadium on Sunday. So I really wouldn't say looking at the wins and losses, but still something to look forward to and everybody it is a uh, very 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 concerning on sunday for the pittsburgh steelers especially on the defensive side of the football and that is where we will start everybody as on Sunday the Steelers will be without slot cornerback Cam Sutton, number two corner on the outside Levi Wallace, starting free safety Minka Fitzpatrick, number one corner Akilla Witherspoon, and defensive tackle DeMarvin Leal the rookie. So basically what we're seeing here everybody is on Sunday against Tom Brady, the Pittsburgh Steelers will be without their entire starting secondary. Digest that for a second. <laughs> How do you yeah. think about that, Victor? It sounds like a bunch of pain. It sounds like no end in sight. Uh I don't even know how, as a defense, and it's nothing against the guys that are backing those guys up. I hate that to just knock them down. But there's reasons why they're not starters, and we saw it in the Buffalo game. Um, you, you're going to have to hope that somehow this D-line and this front seven gets, gets gets to Brady's face because if you give Brady time, he's dropping 50. He's going to drop 50, Joey, with that secondary. Um, I wish he would have got a little – I wish we would have had an opportunity here to see like a – Demonte Casey. I wish he wasn't suspended. That would have made me feel a little better about the back end with him and Edmonds. But you don't have that luxury. No, nope, no. Nope. nope. This is the expected starting secondary on Sunday. Uh, if you have young children, cover their ears. Terrell Edmonds, Trey Norwood, Arthur Millette, James Pierre, Josh Jackson. <laughs> good my friends and I, Victor, I really Victor be, you I you <laughs> you might see Arthur Millette fight and his teammates actually on the field on Sunday this time I, I know <laughs> I think the only person that I, and I and I'm not saying I like Millette that much as a player but the only one that would make me feel okay is Arthur Millette I love Terrell Edmonds. I think we missed him drastically last week, but Terrell's a, a box safety. He compliments well off of Minka, who's center field. Yes. With him just playing in the box, dude, Trey Norwood's going to get smoked. He's a seventh-round pick who just comes in occasionally on dime and packages and stuff like that. Going, gonna up, get... going up against Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage. And those tight ends? Yeah. I, I mean, this is so appetizing and so feasting that if there was a game where Rob Gronkowski would want to come out of retirement for one game and then <laughs> immediately retire at the end, it would literally be this one. And he'll have a game of his life like he always did against us. Yeah. <laughs> This is this equivalent. This is probably just as bad as the 2015 secondary, a 2016 secondary of the Steelers. Probably a little worse, and that's saying a lot. Um, 
to game plan against something like this, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't. Like I said, your front seven's going to have to get pressure because the back end's not going to be able to hold longer. And they uh, haven't. They haven't, they haven't since the injury to Watt. They have not got really any pressure at all on quarterbacks. And with a quarterback like Tom, if he has time, he is going to eat you alive. I just have to ask this as a serious question. Okay. Uh, the NFL record for passing yards in one game was from 1951 by Norm Van Brocklin. He threw for 554 yards. I think that seriously might actually be in jeopardy and in peril, that record. I really do. I think Brady's going to finish any. Well, it just depends if we have another situation like Buffalo, if they pull him. Um, I. It just depends. If Kenny and the offense makes this game a back and forth as long as they can, he's going to hit that number. Brady's hitting that number. If it's a situation where the game is just gone by halftime, I think they pull him by mid-third. You know what I mean? There's just no reason to keep Brady out there. Uh, if he plays the full game, Brady's going to finish anywhere between 450 to 500 plus yards. I'm easily willing to say that with those weapons. I don't know who who's a good matchup. James Pierre's going to have to play the best game of his life. Josh Jackson seemed terrible last week. Arthur Millette is, is an okay four. You know, he's an occasional backer, and then the one, the, the one, the biggest thing here is Trey Norwood playing free safety. That's what's going to kill you. That's what happened. He let up the ninety-eight yard touchdown. Let's not blame that on Levi Wallace. If that's Minka Fitzpatrick on that side of the field, why he was in the box? Don't I don't know why. But if you have Minka playing center field on that ninety-yard, ninety-eight yard touchdown, that's not happening. That's not happening any day of the week. So. Brady can read a defense with like the best though, the best ever. He's gonna pick them apart like he's always done. He's comfortable in the stadium. He's played many games in this stadium. He's gonna have a field day. Yes, in his final, probably final time here. His final time in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, uh, it will be one to remember for old Tommy. Roll Tommy, but we're going to segue into this, everybody, and Victor sort of, uh, sort of started to get that ball rolling with the coaching, or lack thereof, with Minka Fitzpatrick being in the box on a 98-yard touchdown last week against Buffalo on a third and 10, and you have your free safety who doesn't blitz in the box, which is very, very questionable, uh, the last couple of weeks, Tampa Bay has really allowed some yards on the ground, over 150 yards each game. So I guess that means that we're going to see 60 pass calls from Matt Canada, 60 pass plays with the same five <laughs> concepts. Yeah, that sounds just about right. Uh, and if this was a competent coaching staff, reading that number that Tampa's giving up on the ground would tell you that's your only best chance of making this game competitive or even winning. You got to keep your defense off the field as long as possible there's just no way you're gonna you're gonna if you let Tampa win time of possession there's no way you're stopping them with that secondary Joey there's just no way I don't I don't see any end in sight you have to win this game on the ground do you not agree I completely agree and I'm not saying this I guess I am saying this with a little bit of sarcasm but I'm dead serious when I say this they're going to abandon the run so quickly <laughs> that it's not going to be funny. And if you think everybody, if you and I and Victor, if we all think that that's the worst part of this coaching staff, uh, I'll let you share it, Victor, because I was floored. When I heard this, and it was almost like all of my worst fears and and uh, reactions and hunches about this Steelers coaching staff that I've been saying for years all came true at the same time. Uh, before Victor gets into this, we'll give credit to the people who did this. Uh, Mr. DK, Dejan Kovacevic, and Ramon Foster, the former Steelers guard, 
on DK Pittsburgh Sports on the Ramon Foster Show, which they have on YouTube as well. If you look on DK Pittsburgh Sports and their channel. But Victor, I'll let you share this information to the masses. So I think the way that this was brought up was uh, they were talking about can you change coordinators midseason, this, that, and the third. And basically it was along the lines of Ramon saying – his whole time in Pittsburgh, with which was well, was with Big Ben Roethlisberger, the offense never changed. Most NFL teams, most football teams, go into a game with about 15 and 20 plays that are scripted. You know that, Joey. Mm-hmm. Um, however, this whole time that he played with Ben, um, they would go into the game, guys, with three plays that were scripted. Three plays that were scripted. The rest of the game was just nothing but Big Ben taking over and having command of the offense. Three plays. And then it's Big Ben. That is that is insane. That is extreme talent to a whole nother level. That is, he's the offensive coordinator. He was the offensive coordinator for most of his career until probably last season with Matt Canada. I find that astonishing and just absolutely remarkable. And does not you don't realize what you have until it's gone. Yeah, with Ben and him to do that, that is absolutely remarkable excellent insane really showed how good he was on that football field he was winging it in the dirt every play for over a decade yep and what i was getting to is that everybody winning if it seemed like with ben and i know it's the offensive side of the ball so how much of that is on tomlin is to be determined but Tomlin does want to act like he's this hands-on coach who's involved in everything and if he's saying that then he is on the hook for this honestly on the hook for this because Victor you can't play both sides of the card you can't you can't play both sides of the precedent where one minute you're saying you're involved in everything, but it benefits you, but the second the offense stinks, you're not in it. Yeah, You can't yeah. be playing both sides of the card. But basically what this came down to, everybody, is that for years when you sort of had that hunch where, yeah, the Steelers coaching is crap, or it doesn't even look like they're prepared, or the coaching's non-existent, it's because all of that was true and that just shows nothing more that in Roethlisberger's time here and again where the truth was right 90-10 Ben was driving this bus and Tomlin was a passenger I rest my case i can't really even feed off of that uh with that situation from an offensive standpoint standpoint yes that is completely the the, the how it was i uh, rest my case yeah i rest my case that's it that's it and that's how we'll end this one that's how we'll end this one, Steelers Nation. We appreciate you tuning in, watching, listening. As always, make sure to give us a like. Click the like button if you're brand new. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share this podcast all over the masses. And everybody, just to let you know, we will be live Sunday afternoon early. Buccaneers, Steelers, Acroshore Stadium. We'll see if Tom Brady breaks Some records, passing yard record is 554 in a game, passing touchdowns in one game is 7. So we'll see if he tops that to stomp Mike Tomlin into the ground one final time. Because it seems like Brady has more enjoyment, Victor, of putting Tomlin and the Steelers into the ground than pretty much anyone else in the whole league. I can't disagree with you anymore on that statement, and that's what hurts the most as a fan. At least we have Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> we have a quarterback for the future. And we, a have, great we have Kenny. We have Pickens. 
then everybody, we're not going to get too far into everything else other than that, the offseason and the draft and what to do. That's for a whole nother time. But for Victor Valdez and the rest of our great crew here in the Truth Serum, Joey the Truth Wagner signing off. Everybody saying God bless. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your weekend. We will see you on Sunday for the Black and Gold Live.